There's one myth about strength training that I really just think needs to die. It is the idea that lifting is going to make you bulky. And welcome or welcome back to Trail and Ultra Running Training. My name is Will Franz. I'm a running coach, a strength coach, and I've helped athletes improve their performance from 5K to 200 miles. And the whole goal of this podcast is to help you train a little better so you can improve your performance and have a little more fun. If you appreciate the information, I'd love it if you subscribed or followed or shared or whatever or arguably, arguably even better, like just, you know, send it to somebody. Anyway, sorry for the full week off. Been a bit of a depressive week. And then I did actually have an interview for the first time in a while with Doug Franquito. And we were going to talk about, or we did talk about his experience at the Wasatch 100 and doing his first 100 miler, and et cetera. I'm still going to put it out, so I'm not going to get super deep into it here, but um, for the first time since I bought my big fancy microphone, uh, it did not automatically connect to Zoom. So all of that on my end was recorded from the terrible microphone that is inherent to my laptop underneath my desk. And now I actually have to edit a podcast because his audio is great and we talked forever and mine is not great, but salvageable if I do a little editing. Um, but as you might notice... I don't do editing. I don't edit podcasts. I find it really tedious and I hate the way I sound. So I actually have to take a few minutes to do that because we talked for over an hour and a half and it was really good information about training and the race and um, people deserve to hear it. And I just need to actually do, do the editing thing. I also got injured on Sunday, which is a topic for a different day. Nothing bad. We can dive into it later. And now, before we get into the main topic, though, I do want to say something brief about a reel I did a couple days ago. I feel like we are often like married to exercises, and I have been there. I still kind of am, if we're going to be super honest. Like There are some basic exercises that I think people probably should be able to do, or at the very least, try to be able to do, right? Like a squat is a fairly basic human movement that we've been doing for a long time. When I lived in um, East Asia, everyone, like young, old, that's just how they sat down, right? And granted, different culture, but it's not it's not an age thing. It's not a whatever thing. It's just this is just how we would move to some degree if we consider it continued to do so from a young age. And is not to say that everyone's going to get there. It's not to say that it is a realistic expectation to be able to back squat five times your body weight, right? And that's insane. But we should probably at least be targeting some version of that movement if our real goal is health, longevity, and some level of performance. Now, I also think that people get way too obsessed with a lot of these types of movements, like a squat and a deadlift, etc. I think they're super valuable. I think they should be the target. However, if you have someone that just isn't there yet, then maybe we do something else, right? Like if I have some tendon issues or quad issues or hip stuff, and it hurts to do this movement, then maybe we just get on a leg extension and do that. Um, I think a, for example, a clean, a CrossFit made these very popular again, is a great movement, but it's not the only way that we can create power. In fact, it's probably safer, better ways for a lot of people that we could use like a landmine or a dumbbell or whatever. Like we don't need to do a barbell overhead press to build shoulder strength. If we do this standing, then it can be a really good representation of core stability, et cetera, but we don't need to get married to it. You can you can use cable stuff to improve your shoulder strength. We don't need to get obsessed and completely wedded to these ideas of movements just because they are really good, but let's not restrict our progress or hold ourselves back because we're chasing something that's inappropriate right now, right? Like if I have someone who really struggles to walk, then I'm probably not going to make their standard a barbell squat. I'm absolutely going to put them on some kind of leg extension so we can build more quad strength 
or in a hamstring curl so we can build some more hamstring strength and hopefully just make them a stronger human being so that eventually walking feels good and squatting is an option. And we may never get there depending on a thousand factors, right? But the target should be to get there um, or at least to be able to do these things. But if we don't, at least we're still making progress. And that said, I also want to, the main topic of the day is lifting will make me bulky. And I put out an email about this yesterday, I think. I don't know. Time time loses all meaning. And lifting will make me bulky is the general topic that I think I hear more or complaint or whatever. But I think I hear more from people than anything else. This includes injury, includes whatever. Like the thing that I hear both in person and on the phone, whatever, it doesn't matter who they are, can be men, women, young people, old people, um, athletes, couch potatoes, it doesn't matter. I hear this all the time is that I don't want to look like a bodybuilder. And I'm here to tell you that that's great because you will not, you will not look like a bodybuilder because if you don't build a ton of that muscle really early, that's going to be a rough bag. Uh, also, it's just not a thing that happens accidentally, right? Like I know that we all know someone who lifts a lot and has a lot of muscle and is probably a lot bigger than you want to be. And that's super fair, but I also almost guarantee that that person is maybe genetically advantaged, um, but very likely they just lift a lot of weight. They probably go to CrossFit five or six times a week for an hour each time, or they're in the gym running a powerlifting program for five hour to hour and a half sessions a week. They probably eat an insane amount of food in order to intentionally put on that muscle mass. Like the amount of the only subset of the population who does not ever throw that complaint um, is like high, the high school boy crew who comes in at 4 p.m. Um, they're actually super respectful. I have no problems with them, but they're clearly looking to get huge. Other than that, there is just not a lot of pursuit of looking like a bodybuilder in the gym where I work. And it's just not going to happen accidentally because what it takes to build that kind of physique, is usually years of consistently lifting weights for often hours per day, a ton of food to a degree that it can be feel like a job and often a lot of steroids. And if we just start to lift, start to do overhead presses, you're not going to immediately have shoulders the size of bowling, ball, bowling balls, right? If you do, and like, if you do happen to be in the one in a, one in a million people who just happen to build muscle incredibly fast, you can just stop. It's a really nice thing. Give it a try. If you see yourself immediately turning in to a giant human with tons of muscle who feels like they should be stepping on stage in a bikini or a thong, then just stop and you can pull back. Also, probably note that this is a positive thing in the long run because it means you're going to have to work a lot less hard to not get things like osteoporosis and sarcopenia as you age. And we can, and it's going to be easier for you to adjust your appearance if you want to. Now, I promise I'm like not being sarcastic about any of this as much as we often like pretend, especially as athletes, that the like we like to have the appearance doesn't matter and et cetera conversation. Like we have preferences of how we'd like to look, and I respect that. I do. Um, but you're just not going to accidentally grow a hundred pounds of muscle with lifting a couple times a week. It just won't happen. I have an above average genetic ability to build muscle mass, thanks to my dad. And I lift multiple times per week. 
And I would never in a million years be considered or be confused for someone who's a bodybuilder. And this is for multiple reasons. Um, even though I lift multiple times per week, it's usually for like 20 to 30 minutes at a time. I collectively do maybe two to three hours a week. I've never touched steroids. And it's just really difficult to build an insane amount of muscle when you run a lot every week, which is still my larger priority from an athletic perspective. I spend a lot more time running than I do lifting. And as a result, the balance there is just not in my, in the favor of the extra muscle mass, right? It is in the favor of staying at wherever I am and getting faster and getting stronger, but not putting on a ton of body mass. Now, if we make the comparison to running, right? Like saying that you don't want to lift because you're worried that you're going to become a bodybuilder is like saying that you don't want to start running. Like you don't want to go out for a run with your friend group because you're worried that you'll accidentally qualify for Boston. Like it's just not going to happen. It takes a ton of work. It takes a good amount of probably natural talent to get to that level, especially quickly, right? Like we're going to have to put in the time, we're going to have to put in the effort. It absolutely helps if you start young and early. And if you have some natural talent, it might happen faster, but it is so rare to have someone who starts late and immediately ends up super fast, right? And this is not, I can't remember the guy's name. I think his first name is Ben. And he's some, I think he's a Nike athlete and he started running pretty late in life. And now he runs like a two thirty marathon. That's still not necessarily professionally competitive, but it's a lot better than most of us are going to do. And even then he still works really hard and trains really hard. And it's taken years to get to that point. Right. And he clearly has some level of just latent genetic ability that you can't you know, you can't teach that. But even then, like if he had started younger, he might have been a professional. But as it is, like he is a he's a sponsored athlete who started later in life. And that's incredibly impressive. But it didn't happen accidentally. This would be the same thing when it comes to lifting. If you start lifting, if you move some weights around, it is not going to happen accidentally that you just get huge, right? It's going to take a ton of work and some level of like natural genetic proclivity. And then if you want to get really big, it requires you to make the choice to inject steroids into yourself. So it's just not going to be an accident. These are going to be choices that you get to make, right? So I, I'm not here to tell you what to do. That's never my thing. Uh, I, if you don't want to lift, don't, um, you're an adult, as I always say. However, um, lifting is absolutely good for your long-term health, right? It is one of the only, it is one of the forms of exercise that is recommended across the board. And we know that it is going to help you long-term prevent things like sarcopenia, which is age-related muscle loss, and osteoporosis, which is these the porous bones that we can get when we're older. And in conjunction with a decent, decent diet, whatever the hell that means, not the topic right now, um, it can just help you stay healthier, longer, and be able to serve a longer, more functional life of like loading your own bags and overhead compartments, etc. Right. So it is a thing that I think people should do, not because it will make you faster, but because it will make you happier down the line. So if you're interested in that and you want some advice or want some questions or have some questions or whatever, shoot me a message, shoot me a DM. Um, I'm happy to help. And you can just like message me on Instagram or shoot me an email in response to one of the, I think three emails I put out most weeks. And I'd be happy to chat with you about it. I've had a couple calls this week and they were super chill. There was no pushy bullshit. Um, and if it's not a good fit or it's not a good time, then that's absolutely fine. I just want to help you get stronger and do the things you want to do better. It's the whole reason I 
put this shit out in the first place. Anyway, I hope you have a great rest of your day and go have some fun on the trails.